Hey, um, welcome back. So our first talk of the afternoon is uh, Gabor uh, Sekihidi from Northwestern, Notre Dame, <laughs> I don't know, no. uh, who's going to speak about singularities along the Lagrangian mean curvature flow. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much, Tristan. And also, let me thank the organizers for inviting me to this conference. It's really, really an honor to, to speak in this celebration for Professor Kurenishu's work. So I, I was not really able to talk about something that connects closely enough, but, but anyway, so this is what it is. Okay, so yes, I'll, I'll be talking about the Lagrangian mean curvature flow. So first, I need to set up some of the, the basic notation. Okay, so, so throughout, X is going to be a compact Calabria manifold. And dimensional and so this has uh, some structures so there's a it has a holomorphic volume form then there's a, a Kähler metric which is whose volume form is omega essentially This is a, a Ricci flat Kähler metric. And then I'll also write J for the complex structure. Okay, so what, what I want to study is Lagrangian submanifolds of this X where you, you use omega for the symplectic form. So suppose that there's an L, which is a, a Lagrangian submanifold. An X. Okay, so this just means that it has real n dimension and the symplectic form vanishes on it. And then okay, so and then I need to define this notion of a Lagrangian angle. So let's say. I'm going to not define everything, just the things that I really need. So we say that L is, is almost calibrated. If there exists a function, this Lagrangian angle. Such that. And on the one hand, when you restrict the holomorphic volume form to L, then this can be expressed like this, that e to the i theta times the, the volume form on L. Okay, so this is what's usually just called graded or zero mass lob. And then almost calibrated is that the oscillation of this theta is less than pi. I essentially always assume this condition, even though some things work more generally, but just makes life easier. And then L is special Lagrangian. Which I, I'll abbreviate with this S lag lag. If this uh, theta is constant. So again, there are different conventions. So for some people, the theta has to be some specific value, like zero. So for me, special Lagrangian just means it is constant. And then, you know, for, for simplicity, it, it, we, we can often just assume to later on, I, I might skip some assumptions. If you just assume that L is a sphere, then, then all those assumptions will be fine. So, Okay, and then what this has to do with mean curvature is the following. The
a kind of very useful calculation in this field is that the, the mean curvature h of l is actually related to this angle. So if you take the gradient of theta on L and then apply this complex structure to it, then you'll get a vector field orthogonal to L. And this is the mean curvature with respect to the sort of Riemannian structure of the ambient space X. So this is And then in particular, this means that special Lagrangians are just Lagrangians that are minimal. So Lagrangians whose mean curvature is, is zero. And in fact, we, we, I won't need, need this, but the, this well-known theory of calibrations due to Harvey and Lawson in particular, in this case, this almost calibrated comes from that. The special Lagrangians are actually calibrated, which means that they're, they're even area minimizing in their homology class, not just zero mean curvature. So they're very nice minimal submanifolds. So these are minimal Lagrangians. Okay, so now it's a, a very interesting question and comes up in you know, mirror symmetry, among other things, to find these, to find such special Lagrangians. And there's a kind of conjecture that I say it very vaguely due to Thomas and Yao, so the vague Thomas Yao conjecture. Because I just want to state that extremely informally, which says that there exists a, a special Lagrangian, say L prime, which is somehow equivalent to L. If and only if L is stable in, in some sense. And this notion of stability is, is the, the one motivated from the Donaldson Uhlenbeck Yao theorem and the geometric invariant theory. So the reason why I'm saying it so vaguely is that you know we can what one needs to discuss what does equivalence mean that could range from things like the two are Hamiltonian isotopic to each other to much more general things like the object they define and the derived Fukaya category is, uh, is isomorphic or you know, things. There's a very wide range of possible notions of equivalent. And similarly for stable, I, I don't think that at the moment there is really a, an accepted version of what, what, what should the correct stability notion be. I was told to only use the middle. I was hoping to not have to erase the entire lecture. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, what I want to talk about today is is a one approach to this problem, which is given by the mean curvature flow. So that's a very natural process by which you might want to find, you know, given a submanifold, you could try to deform it to a minimal one. So this is also initiated by, by Thomas and Yao. Right. Mean curvature flow. Okay, so what you do is you look at this, this evolution where you have now a family of submanifolds LT and you always just deform in the direction of the mean curvature. This was this J nabla theta. And then because of this form, it can be shown that actually this, this evolution preserves the Hamiltonian deformation class. So as long as they're embedded, you'll be, there'll be Hamiltonian isotopic. Once the flow becomes just immersed, then it's a little bit more delicate what exactly you want. 
but anyway, so these preserve uh, <coughs> some natural equivalence class of Lagrangians because of this, this form. So infinitesimally, you're moving it in some by a Hamiltonian. As our L that we had, and then T, so typically the, the slow has short time existence, and then typically it will exist to some, some time when some singularity might form. Okay. So then, more recently, Dominic Joyce introduced this, this kind of much more vast conjecture than the, than the earlier ones. Let me call it the Joyce program. So what he suggests is that one can try to understand this thomas -Yeah conjecture or even just make it more precise by studying this mean curvature flow, in this case called the Lagrangian mean curvature flow. And whenever there are some singularities, then you need to do some surgery. And so sort of similarly to Perelman's like, and Hamilton, Don's approach to the Poincaré conjecture, somehow this flow with surgeries would tell us, like, you know, it, it would answer this Thomas Yao conjecture. Okay, so let's say you can use mean curvature flow with surgeries. He specifically relates the existence of special Lagrangians to Bridgeland stability conditions. I'm not an expert in this, and in fact, part of the point would be to even just define what this Bridgeland stability condition is by, by using the flu. Okay, this will not come up in my talk anymore. <laughs> Okay, so okay, so on the face of it, this seems like a very nice strategy. Just start with any Lagrangian, run this flu, and then hope that maybe you can understand the singularities. And eventually, it should converge to a, a minimal Lagrangian because it, you know, the flow is basically the gradient flow of the area, and then you can hope to find find these special Lagrangians. Okay, so from now on, I'll restrict myself to the two-dimensional case, and and as I said before, let, let me just emphasize that I, I will also always assume this almost calibrated condition. Maybe more just for the experts so in case I'm saying something and you're thinking ah, that needs almost calibrated. It's there. <laughs> okay, so Joyce's program includes this kind of proposal for what, what are some basic singularities that can occur. So here, here are two basic things that he expects. One of them is what we could call neck, or what he calls neck pinches. And this is really just, a, it's easiest to just write what, what the model is. So these are singularities modeled on, on, on the family. If you, if you just look at these hyper complex hypersurfaces in C2, and that's as T goes to zero, then, then these just degenerate to, to two planes meeting transversely. And okay, I, I didn't tell you, but in complex dimension two, actually special Lagrangian is the same as complex after you modify the complex structure by some hyperkähler rotation. So really, you know, these are Lagrangian if you CW change the complex structure first. Okay, so 
neck pinches are these things where you know some your your surface is evolving, and then at some point you would have this little region which looks very much like this kind of hyperbola, and then at the singular time this neck gets pinched, and now you have two two planes meeting. So this this is one kind of singularity that we expect. Then the other one is what I call pier drops. So this Joyce in his paper, he has a very beautiful picture of this. And now that I see that I could have projected at the same time, I could show you the picture, but I definitely cannot draw it. So let me say that this is something that's very much analogous to what happens for curve short shortening flow. The curve shortening flow is just when you put dimension is one, and then Lagrangians are just any curve on the, the Riemann surface. And the curve shortening flow is just shortening the curve. It's just is the same equation. So these are in, in curve shortening flow. There is this this process by which little loops can get pinched off and form singularities. Let, let me write it like this. So it, it really is just mean curvature flow in, in two, uh, two real dimensions. Okay, but let me just draw the picture. So if, in case you've never seen this kind of thing before, curve shortening flow would be when, when, it has, when you have a sort of little loop like this, then what would happen is over time, this loop would shrink. And then the limit, you would get a singularity, which is a, is a kind of cusp. Okay, so this, this kind of thing can happen along curve shortening flow. And, and in some sense, this proposed singularity in Joyce's program is, is, is very similar to this, except instead of a curve, you, you have sort of planes coming out and then something gets pinched. Okay, but what's the crucial thing about this can already be seen for curve short, shortening flow. Because in this case, this Lagrangian angle is really just the angle that the sort of oriented tangent vector makes with the x axis. And then what you see is that as you go around here, there is a sort of change in you know, over more, more than pi to get from, from this side to this side. And what happens at the singularity is that somehow this big change in pi got collapsed to a point. So if you keep track of what the angle does, then in this limit, it's no longer continuous. There, there will be a jump in pi when you get here. And in particular, this is very bad for Lagrangian mean curvature flow because you'd like the angle to keep, the, you, you want this grading to, to persist. So in the same way, in this teardrop singularity and Joyce's proposal, that's very bad. And in fact, he wants to avoid that. So these should be avoided. By, by doing some sort of earlier surgery. Okay, so I'll come back to this in, in, in a little while. <laughs> Okay, so my, the, my goal in today's talk is just to explain or talk about some, some recent results on analyzing basically these two types of singularities from essentially like a geometric analysis point of view, you know, just from the point of view of mean, mean curvature flow. Okay. So I, ha I have to say, set up a little bit of notation on, on how do we normally analyze these curvature flow singularities. So what you want to do is you want to do some sort of rescaling process and pass to some limit, like somehow zoom into the singularity. So, so these mean curvature, curvature flow singularities can be studied by considering blow ups. Okay. 
okay, so what you do is you, you pick some point, let's say a sequence of points in your Calabial manifold, and it will be really helpful to just imagine that this X is isometrically embedded in some huge Euclidean space. Okay, so you pick a sequence of points, you also pick some sequence of times converging to this capital T, and I'm kind of assuming that let's pretend that the singularity forms there, so that what I wrote there is the maximal existence time, and you pick some parameters going to infinity, so these will be the kind of blow up scales, and then you parabolically rescale your flow. Parabolic rescalings. So now we have we'll have a sequence of flows. Let me write them as L, K, T. And all this is is you you take your original flow L, then you sort of make the time zero become dk, and then you add this lambda k squared t. If this is just the correct scaling and, and the, of time. You translate by this xk, and then you scale by lambda k. Maybe here there should be a minus. Okay, so basically what this does is this is the, the way the scaling is done is just so that this thing is again a solution of the Lagrangian mean curvature flow and uh, well, I should have kept that but to maybe I can just move that other thing down again. So what you should imagine is that there is some sequence of points. So for example, okay, you could always look at this middle point. The singularity is forming, and then just, just sort of zoom in at some scales that you you pick, and and you you rescale. So you're kind of looking at smaller and smaller neighborhoods and scale them up. Okay, in this, in this limit, you would get this, this, it would go down to a point. So then a basic compactness result tells you that along some subsequence. This sequence LK T would converge to some mean curvature of flu L infinity T, perhaps in some weak sense, but let's not worry about that. And because you're kind of blowing everything up, this will be a flu in, in C2. So the geometry of X disappears in this limit. And then T, it will be a, an ancient solution because of the way the rescaling works. That will exist at least on, on this interval or perhaps even longer. Okay, so now there are a few different cases. Okay. Find a couple of things. So the, the most special kind of rescaling is if you take, so if all the points are the same and all the PKs are just a singular time, then what you get is what's called a tangent flow. So this is the analogous thing to taking like the tangent line to a curve or something. So, It's called a, a tangent flu. L T at, at this point. So this has a lot of nice structure. It's a, it, it's a it has a self-similarity because of the Swiss Kent monotonicity formula. But it's you should think of this as the kind of infinitesimal information that's analogous to like a tangent plane. So for example, if the T was not a singular point, you would just get a, a plane. And if this is a plane, then T, then XT is not a singular point. So it's exactly like the like tan tangent spaces. But 
Otherwise, we get more general blue ops. And then I, I say in a second why one would want to consider these. So, for example, one thing that you can do is you can move the point. So I could, instead of this central point, I could always put the point at the like end of this little loop. And then I could try to always rescale by the amount that keeps the curvature bounded. And then what you get is what's called a type two blow up. You will extract the limit, which is smooth because you're kind of rescaling by the maximum of the curvature and it's, it's not flat. So in this case, what you get is the so-called so Grimm Reaper curve. It will be a kind of translating solution which models how the singularity is like being sucked into this intersection point. Okay, so for example, a very important type of blow up is a smooth non-flat so called type two. That's a little sure you'll see this type two a lot. <clears throat> okay, so the issue typically is that when you take this tangent flow, then it's, it's still maybe singular. So, for example, in this case, if you take the tangent flow, then probably from these pictures, you might be able to guess that it will just be a, a double line. So just to align with multiplicity two, but that's kind of highly singular and it doesn't really tell you what happened just before the singularity. So the point of these type two blow ups is that it still preserves all the geometry. There's no kind of collapsing happening because you're forcing the curvature to be bounded. Okay, so typically when people study mean curvature flow, I mean, the, the easiest thing is when you look at a tangent flow and it happens to be smooth and then that really models exactly what's happening. Unfortunately for Lagrangian mean curvature flow, there's a theorem due to Andre Neves, which says that actually all tangent flows are just unions of planes with maybe with multiplicity. Tangent flows are unions of, of planes through the origin. And they could even have, you could have planes with multiplicity. So in particular, if it's just one plane, then there is no singularity. And in every other case, actually the tangent flu itself is singular. And this is very problematic in the sort of traditional mean curvature flu techniques. Okay. So if you've seen talks on, on the usual mean curvature flow of hypersurfaces, then you know, there, are, there are many results on classifying tangent flows. So these are what are called shrinkers. The easiest one is like a sphere just shrinking to a point. But in general, the shrink, shrinkers are not, it's not classified what the possibilities are. So here it's very nice because at least in two dimensions, all tangent flows are just a bunch of planes. Like there's nothing, nothing weird going on. Okay, so now let me say what are what what are the results? Theorem one. But this is joint work with Jason Lotte, Felix Schulze. Okay, so the the first main result is. If, if, you, if you're not in this area, it sounds a little bit technical. So it's basically just saying that these tangent flows are unique. So let me just write it to so the, the tangent flows of the form. So V is just union of two planes which meet transversely. They intersect at the origin. Thank you. 
these are unique. So what does this mean? So if you go up, remember that there was this statement along a subsequence. So you, you choose, for when you look at the tangent flow, then the xk is just x, the tk is just t, but you still get to choose the sequence. And the sort of general compactness theory just says that along a subsequence, this will converge to a tangent flow. And, and one of the main problems in this area and many related fields of geometric analysis is, is whether this tangent flow is unique or if different sequences can give you different limits. The uniqueness is a kind of regularity. It's saying like a curve, there exists a tangent line, like there's a unique tangent. And, and really the, the main novelty here, I feel like I should just mention this, is that as far as I know, this is the first type of tangent flu that's where you have uniqueness, where it's, where it's actually singular. So it's somewhat analogous to studying like tangent cones of the Einstein, Einstein metrics or minimal surfaces where the singular set is, is not isolated. So typically people study isolated singular singularities, which in this case would be a shrinker, which is smooth up to the thing, like until it gets singular, like a sphere shrinking to a point. Whereas this is a tangent flow that's singular at all times, because you always have this point. It's just a sort of static planes that don't move in time, but it's, it's singular for all time. Be a singular for all time. Like typically, people study the case when there's only one isolated singularity in space time. Right. More, more on this. Thank you. So, anyway, this, this is the kind of technical result, but now let, let me explain what the, the geometric applications of this are. So can you explain why uh, you expect it to be unique? Sorry? Can you explain why you expect it to be unique? And so I, I think it's, it's probably widely expected that these things are unique, just because we don't know how to construct any examples where it's, where it's not unique. But, but uniqueness is only known in very special circumstances. Maybe I should have listed them. So Kolding and Nikodzi have a famous result from a few years ago on uniqueness of cylinders. So those are smooth everywhere. And then uh, Chodosh and Schulze have uniqueness for like these asymptotically conical cases. So in, in general, it's very much an open problem. Okay, so what, how does this relate to this Thomas Yao conjecture? So some corollaries. Okay, so let, let's pretend that that at this first singular time, there's only one singularity and it has this type of tangent flu. So, you know, suppose the only singularity at, at this singular time has this tangent flu V. As, as above. So there's two, two transverse planes. Okay, then we can deduce several things. So then one, what, what then happens is exactly what we would expect from that, that model picture of this hyperbola collapsing or degenerating into two planes. So in fact, what happens is that you can take a limit. So let me just write it. Because abbreviated way so this you can actually define the flow at the limiting time which will be a c1 immersed lagrangian okay so for example with the sphere 
what would happen is that now you would have two spheres because there's this, this pinching happened. So you have two spheres meeting transversely, and then you can continue the flow. So this is the this is one of those surgeries that were proposed by Joyce. This is the so, so basically you have this neck pinch. I, I'm lying a little bit because you know it's not we don't have exactly some refined picture of exactly how the singularity occurs, but nevertheless, in the limit, you get some immerse thing that you can keep flowing. Then two, there is some type to blow up. One of these blow ups with non flat banded curvature blow ups. Uh, given by uh, uh, by this this hyperbola. This is what, what's called the, the Lawler neck. Okay, so this means that along the flow, as the singularity is happening, when you zoom in in the correct place, then you will you will see see this thing in, in the limit. Okay, so it is, it is, this Lawler neck is getting pinched. A priori, there might be some other stuff that's also happening, but there's at least one that's getting pinched. And then as a consequence, we can prove some sort of weak form of, and then let's bring this up. We can prove a weak form of, of Thomas Yao's uh, like, like they have a they have a conjecture about the flu. Okay, so let me explain what that is. Two, three. Okay, I, I need to make this assumption that the flu actually stays embedded until the singular time. Okay, so if it's embedded until up to the singular time, then then this our original L is, is Hamiltonian isotopic. To a graded connect sum. M one, M two. Okay, so it is graded connect sum is a kind of connect sum in the category of graded Lagrangians. So Lagrangians that admit this data, and it, it's basically just you have M one and M two that intersect transversely, and you replace that transverse intersection with a small Lawler neck. That's kind of this the geometry of this. Okay, it's isotopic to this, where we have two conditions, which both follow very easily just from, from the flu. So, so one is that if you look at this kind of, this is just the, the holomorphic volume form integrated and the absolute value. So in particular, this thing is always at most the actual volume of M1. So this equals the volume of M1 if M1 is special Lagrangian, otherwise it's smaller. Okay, so we have this. The reason for stating it in this way is that, you know, a priori we may be able to just look at L. We could try to figure out all possible ways of writing it as a connect sum. As a graded connect sum, and then we, these can be calculated. You don't need to know what the actual volume is just before the singularity happens. And the other condition is that the arguments of these integrals of the volume form are. And this, the, these integrals are some sort of average of the of the Lagrangian angle of m1 and m2. What you deduce is that these are both in this interval. That's Int of theta sup theta, and then okay. Let, let me just say that like once you have this second part, then this is essentially a triviality because 
exactly what's happening is that somewhere you can find an extremely small Lawler neck. And then what you do is you just replace that with the corresponding two planes. That's what will give you M1 and M2. Then the first one just follows from this thing that I said that these two quantities are always smaller than the volume of the corresponding M1, M2. And mean curvature flow decreases volume. So that you can arrange this. And these are also these average angles. And the angle satisfies the heat equation. So the, by using the maximum principle, you easily see that these sub the two pieces that you get in this process all have angles in this range. Okay, so this. Okay, so the reason why I'm mentioning this is that this is explicitly one of Thomas Yao's conjectures, which is not which is not exactly the same as the stability conjecture. So Thomas and Yao. They have the following sort of flow, mean curvature flow conjecture. So if, if you can not write, so if L cannot be written as a graded connect sum of M1, M2, satisfying either one of those conditions, And if you can pick your favorite condition and just focus on that if you want. So if L cannot be decomposed in this way, then they conjecture that the flow will not have singularities and converges to a, a smooth special Lagrangian as P goes to infinity. Okay, so I mean, it's still not clear what happens at infinity, but you know, for example, you could have some multiplicity developing at infinity too. But yeah, so the, the point is that if, if we pretend that the flu remains embedded for as long as it exists, and the only possible singularity would have tangent flu given by these two transverse planes, then, then that would imply the part of this conjecture except this that this needs to be refined a little bit the, the convergence at infinity okay. so now let me say what the so that this is what the results are about these neck pinches okay but what about this other kind of singularity so again it's joint work with jason and and felix so let, let me state it this way. Okay, so let, let LT now, instead of a compact calabial, let's say we're in C2. So let this be an ancient solution. Of this Lagrangian mean curvature flow. Okay, so ancient just means that p goes from minus infinity to some, some finite value. And then, just in the interest of time, there are some technical conditions on the sort of area growth, but all of these conditions are automatically satisfied when you try to apply it. Technical conditions, and then the other, the main assumption is that if if one blew down, so this is similar to the blow up, except now the parameter is go to zero instead of infinity. So if one blow down is the union of planes which now meet along a line.
then then this LT is a is a translator to the translators are just very simple solutions of the mean curvature flu, which do exactly what you think. They just translate in some direction with time. So for example, this Grim Reaper that I mentioned earlier is, is a translator. Okay, so what's the point of this? Well, maybe I should just say like, okay, so what are some examples? So LT could just be just two planes meeting along a line or translated a little bit and that will satisfy this. But the, the actual interesting one is what our, uh, our translator is constructed by Joyce Lee and Sui. And these Joyce Lee Tsui translators are exactly the thing that in Joyce's proposal should be this, this thing that makes this teardrop happen. So uh, really the goal would be to show that if you have the that sort of bad behavior that you want to rule out, then, then you can see one of these translators. So conjecturally, these, these are the only options. There, no, there are no other options. Okay, so in some sense, this theorem two is, is kind of a first step towards classifying these ancient solutions. And I should say, so like I described before, ancient solutions are what you get if you do any sort of blow up along the flow, then you always get an ancient solution. So classifying ancient solutions is telling you how singularities can form. Okay, so the corollary of this, Is that suppose say a tangent flow this point x t is is of this form that it's two planes meeting along a line then then, then we know all the possible blow ups. So any blow up but so where, where the points go to X and the times go to T, any blow up is one of uh, so it's two either two planes, like A, two planes. A non trivial translator, a translator that actually moves. Or, unfortunately, we can't rule out a third option, which is a, a, a smooth special Lagrangian. So, for example, a Lawler neck. Or, okay, so I should say here that the, the, the issue is that it's even though the tangent flow, flow is given by these two planes, like meeting along the line. You could blow it up, and so you could blow up in such a way that you 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 kind of lose that structure at at minus infinity when you want to consider these blowdowns. So the the blow up, if you blow down the blow up, you don't necessarily get back the, the tangent flow. But still, we expect maybe I should say that you could also just have one plane if you blow up too much. If you zoom in too much, you just like flatten everything out. But let, let me ignore that. Lagrangian. So we expect that this that we can always find B. That some suitable blow up gives you B.
to again it's instructive to think about the the curve for turning through so here if you as i said if you look at these points and blow up around these these points then you, you get this grim reaper which is a translator so that would be the thing that we really want but of course you could also blow up at like some other points like you could decide that you're interested in what, what what's happening over here and then if you blow up too much by by two you know if you scale up too much you just get one line but if you scale up by just the right amount you might get two parallel lines which is you know it's telling you kind of what's happening between this point and this point so all these different blow ups like you need to know all possible blow ups to understand what, what's really happening. Okay, so let me see. it's so hard to see. So maybe um, maybe let, let me just say what, what are some natural questions that, that come out of this. There's some, some questions that we'd really like to understand. So first of all, the so I mentioned Nevis's result that all the tangent flows are just unions of planes so in two dimensions. So, okay, you can have one plane, then there's no singularity. For two planes, there are three options. They're either transverse, they meet along the line, or they're just one plane with multiplicity two. So here we've kind of understood to some extent the two of these cases. Maybe I should mention well, yeah, I mean, never mind. So we understood two of these. So one natural problem is what happens if we have a tangent flow that's a multiplicity two plane but more generally what if we have a whole bunch of planes so you know we'd really want to know sort of okay what what happens for example is there uniqueness or or more general tangent flows So I should say that both of these results seem seem somewhat sharp in their techniques. I, I don't really see any easy way to, you know, have like three planes meeting along a line or even three planes meeting in a point. Like the, the techniques just se kind of seem to break down, which which is a little bit depressing. On the other hand, maybe what would be much better is to just show that actually if you have a generic initial condition. Then, then these are the only two things that can happen. So I think there is some reason to believe that that, that might be the case. So, so what would be extremely interesting would be to show that all these other worst tangent flows can just be ruled out if you perturb the initial condition. So, uh, or gener generic. Initial condition, the you know, only, only the cases in one and two can happen. So unfortunately, our understanding of this kind of problem, so Kolding and Minikotzi have, have worked on this, but I think there are new results which would say that a certain non-compact tangent flu can somehow be avoided by taking a generic initial condition like somehow you'd want to say that you can perturb and it just kind of goes past the, the singularity and you know, un unless it's one of these two so actually joyce conjectures that this these two behaviors 
the snack pinch and this teardrop are generic. So if you perturb the Lagrangian a little bit, then, then you cannot get rid of these two behaviors. And it would be extremely nice if somehow the other ones you could, you could just get rid of. Okay. Um, the other thing that to, I would say that this two transverse planes case was pretty well understood. So to, to really understand this theorem, uh, well, you know, the, this other case that happens in theorem two more, we'd really need to know more information. So like I drew for the curve shortening flow, you really need to know a little bit more, more about what's happening in between. Maybe I can get back that. So the, we need more. Some more information and, and theorem two. So, what exactly do we need? So, Joyce's uh, program says that in this teardrop case, what should actually happen is that you should be able to find some holomorphic disk that with boundary on the Lagrangian. And then what's happening is that that's shrinking to zero. So, in the curve shorthanding flu, since this is actually in C. There are indeed, there is a holomorphic disk and that area is shrinking to zero, but you need to find something like this in this you know, higher dimensional setting. The Joyce predicts that if in this, in, in the, the teardrop situation, the case uh, a holomorphic disk shrinks to zero. And then the, the point is that through so his proposal, this mean curvature flow with surgery is actually more complicated than just looking at the mean curvature flow itself. You need these additional banding co-chains you need to maintain that this, the Fleur homology is, is unobstructed. And the point would be that if you have a disk shrinking to zero, then somehow that would say that it, it is obstructed. So you should find some earlier time when it just became, you go back, there has to be a time when it became obstructed from being unobstructed. And at that time, you should do something else. What he suggests is sort of opening a neck. But the first step towards trying to make this into a reality would be basically analyze more in, in the theorem to sort of how exactly such a singularity is forming. So for example, the classification of these translators, you, you need to understand what happens at kind of different, different scales. And maybe just a very concrete thing. There, for example, I think a very attractive question is if, if the flow is embedded, P less than P and it's somehow a generic initial condition, then, then actually we should be able to rule out this, this two planes meeting along a line because if it's, if it's embedded, then, then you should not be able to find this uh, disk. So if it's embedded with generic initial condition. Then, then somehow only the theorem one, the, the two transverse planes should happen. And you rule out the tangent flow in theorem two. So that would imply that if your flow is embedded and generic, then the only singularity that can happen is these neck pinches. And in particular, that, that would say that in this case, Thomas Yao's conjecture holds. And in fact, I, I suspect that they, they might kind of have assumed anyway, implicitly that, that the things are embedded because once, once they're immersed, then, then everything becomes somehow more, more complicated. 
Okay, so I think this is a good good place to stop. Thanks. Are there any questions? This um, maximal existence time t in the Kaleriichi flow that's uh, cohomological in the unnormalized Kaleriichi flow is there, is there any geometry behind what it is in the existence? My guess is prob probably not. I mean, one one thing that can happen here is that you have some you know some singularity forms, and then it. So the the flow becomes immersed, and at a later time you have to kind of un, do, reverse the pro procedure. You have to sort of put this neck in again. I mean, singularities can form for reasons that don't are not really sort of structural to the problem. It's more just some complicated evolution equation that just happens to have singularities. Can, are the um, multiplicity two planes expected to be generic? I think close. probably not, at least Dominic convinced me that this should not be generic. I have two questions. One is uh, you mentioned you should uh, modify with surgery and you expand. Sorry, that you can modify uh, by doing early surgery. Yeah, so I mean, basically, what, what would happen is that if, like here, and there's some more complicated pictures that, that one should draw than this. But for example, here, what you do is you would want to actually go back in time to the time when some this disk has the same area as some other disk. And at that point, so, so you, you actually have a choice about how you, you continue. Like if whenever you have some immersed point, then, then actually you, you could just decide to do something like this. So you could like undo, you could do the reverse of the snack pinch. Like you don't have to continue it as an immersed flow. So you could pick a time when you happen to have, you, know, you, you need to have some more this than this to actually get some reasonable setting. But you, know, you, you, have, you could have something like this. And then you would have, you, you'd find a time when you have two disks of equal area. And then instead of continuing and making this guy shrink more, you just somehow get, get rid of this. For instance, and then could have something like this. Okay, the actual example is something more complicated, but you. So yeah, one one thing, especially with this high dimension curvature flow, if, if it's immersed, then there's definitely highly non-uniqueness because at any time you have some immersed point, you could also decide to continue the flow by by doing something different than the than evolving both sheets on their own. And uh, what happens to the Joyce program if the number of singularities is not finite? I mean, I think maybe this is beyond where we are yet, but probably you'd want to ensure that it's somehow finite. I mean, for example, in this case, like, I mean, if you make enough strong assumptions, so if, if the flow, so yeah, if, if the only tangent flow you ever see is the two transverse planes, then it's not hard to show that you have to have finitely many singularities, basically because at some point you would have a very small, compact, almost calibrated Lagrangian, but that cannot exist in, in like a, it, it will always have some minimum area. But if you have to do these other kind of preventive surgeries, then I, I don't know how you would argue that you don't have to keep doing, you know, it could be that you keep collapsing an act and opening it like this keep doing this and then nothing happens. But there should be some reason why you don't you don't do that. Any any other questions? If not, let's uh, thank Gabor again. <laughs>